Hi, I'm Catherine Pfaff. I'm a math professor at Queen's University in Kingston, Ontario. And today I'm going to tell you about the universal quantifier uh, for all. So that's what that uh, upside down A means. It's easy to remember because it's upside down A in for all, like as in the A in all. Okay, uh, so just to highlight that, so for all means for all, but a lot of times actually it's more precise to say for each uh, because whatever you're talking about depends on the individual object. Um, and you might see that a bit more in a moment. And another thing that's kind of important to note about this, so this is the symbol for all, which is, uh, it means for all or for each. And then what we need, so we need something called a universe of discourse. Okay, by that I mean what kinds of objects are we considering? If we're saying all the objects, you know, and we only mean all the red objects, uh, then we don't actually, well, we need to specify that we mean all the red objects instead of just all the objects. Okay, so i.e., what kinds of objects are we considering? Uh, with some typical kind of examples being maybe we mean all the real numbers, maybe we mean all the rational numbers, all the continuous functions maybe. Or maybe all the even numbers, so maybe we don't even mean all the integers, but we mean all the even numbers. So it's always kind of important to specify this, right? Because otherwise we just don't know what we're considering all of. And so I'll just be explicit and write that. Okay, now it's important then to know how do we actually prove a for all statement now that we kind of know what it might look like. And I'll, and I'll kind of explain how we would prove or disprove one, and then we'll actually go through an example. So to prove or disprove for all statements. Okay, so to prove one, what we want to do, so we need a proof that works for all elements in the universe of discourse at once. So we need a proof working for all elements in the universe of discourse. At once. Okay, so this is not, you cannot just do this for a single example. Or even for, you know, some number of examples that aren't all of them. Okay, uh, and the standard way to do this, so that's kind of the first point about this, the standard way to do this is you start with an arbitrary element. Okay, um, and, and you'll see me do that. So standard uh, to begin. And that makes it clear because the element was arbitrary that this proof works for all the elements in your universe of discourse. So an arbitrary element of the universe of discourse. So to disprove, on the other hand, uh, you only have to do it for a single example. Like you just need a single counterexample, as in general. You'll see that um, often that to disprove a, a statement, uh, you can just use a single counterexample, even though an example didn't work to prove a statement. So 
So we want to find a counterexample and show it's a counterexample. Okay, so let's actually go through, I actually want to kind of go through one of these for all proofs. Okay, so this is a for all statement proof example. Okay, so claim the square of every odd number is odd. And before kind of seeing how to prove it, uh, and I don't actually, maybe I'll actually put in the, um, the, the explanation, the description, uh, in an example where I actually kind of go through the scratch work for this. But in order to actually kind of, well, even to identify that this is a for all proof, you might want to look at it symbolically and say, well, what are we saying? We're saying for all n and z, so z, or the integers, is our universe of discourse. We have if n is odd, then n squared is odd. Okay, so it's an if-then statement, but because it's for everything in the universe of discourse, it's a for-all statement. Okay, so proof. So we want to start with, as we said over there, we want to start with an arbitrary element in our universe of discourse, making sure to specify our universe of discourse. Okay, so let n be an arbitrary odd number. And I highlight here, okay, so the first thing is it's important that we start with an arbitrary element, okay? Right, because this is a for all statement, that part should be there. And then the other thing is to really kind of state your universe of discourse. So I'm here, I'm stating my universe of discourse. Okay, now we have, since we have, we want to actually get an arbitrary element in a form that we can work with, but we know what our odd numbers look like, okay? So by the definition of an odd number, right, there exists in an integer k, And then we have, so we want n equals k plus 1. As I said before, this is uh, very common. Oops. n equals 2k plus 1. Okay. As I mentioned before, this is very common that to actually be able to do something in your proof, you need to get your arbitrary element in a form that you can actually work with. Okay. Now, and then it's really nice. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to state what we need. Uh, which is helpful to the reader to follow your argument. It also can be helpful to yourself in terms of remembering what you're aiming for. Okay? So, in order to show that n squared is an odd number, and then again we're going to put it into a generic form that's easier to work with using the definition, so it suffices to show, in order to show that n squared is an odd number, 
using the odd number definition, it suffices to show that there exists an integer m so that n squared equals, now we want 2m plus 1. Okay. So now we've kind of established, we started with an arbitrary element. We said what our universe of discourse was. We used the definition of an odd number to get this in a form we could actually work with to get n in a form we can actually work with. And then it's helpful both to yourself and the reader to state kind of, uh, and again, using a form that you can actually work with, what you're aiming to actually prove. You also can see here, so this is where we also make this observation, that the statement we're going to have to show is actually an existence statement. Okay, so you can uh, look at the existential quantifier and how do you prove a statement like that? So how do you prove a statement like that? You state an example of it, and then you show it works, okay? In your scratch work, you can actually find the example, um, but we're not just showing scratch work here, we're just showing the final product, so I'm just gonna state what my M is, uh, and in there, verify that it actually works. Works here means that we have N squared equals two M plus one, and M is an integer. Okay, uh, since, and you're going to notice in here I'm going to use inline expressions, which are, even though it's standard in mathematic texts, anytime you write anything in a document that you use complete sentences, you don't use logic symbols, so you're allowed to use notation. Using inline expressions is totally allowed and often makes it easier for the reader to follow what's going on. Okay, so since n equals 2k plus 1, we have... And here's where I'm going to use an inline expression. I'm going to write n squared equals, and now I just start working with that I actually have. So I know that n equals 2k plus 1, so I just want to square that. So I have 2k plus 1 squared. And then I can just kind of write that out. So that's 4k squared plus 4k plus 1. And if I was trying to do this without scratch work and trying to do it on the fly, um, I would look at that and remind myself I'm trying to get something in this form where m is an integer, okay? And I notice that each of these is divisible by 2, so I can pull out a 2 and have this kind of integer left and have the plus 1 there. So I'm going to have 2 times 2k squared plus 2k plus 1, right? And looking at this, I said, oh, perfect, because this is an integer. This is going to be m. Since k is an integer, because integers are closed under multiplication and addition, so uh, that whole expression is going to be an integer. Okay. So since k is an integer, because integers are closed under addition and multiplication, I get that this is an integer. We also have, looking at this expression, that it satisfies this. right? So our existence proof will be done then. Okay. So since k is an integer... And I could have actually written k in z. That would have been okay, notationally. Okay, so 2k squared plus 2k is an integer. Hence, right, this is one of these words that we use instead of using the implied symbol. Okay, so hence letting m equals 2k squared plus 2k. So hence letting m equal 2k squared plus 2k, right? And this is an important part of the existence proof, right? I said there's an existence proof hidden in here. Uh, the for all proof came into play when we said this was an arbitrary number. The existence proof here, this is where we're going to state what our m is. We've already shown that it's integer, which is half of how it works. The other part, we look at there and we say, oh, good, it satisfies this, okay? Um, so we have m equals Da, 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 da. We have the desired integer m so that okay. 
so that uh, n squared equals 2m plus 1. And by the definition of an odd number, by the definition of an odd number, n squared is an odd number as desired. Okay, and then it's nice to end this by pointing out that our element was arbitrary, so it would, this proof, same proof works for all odd numbers. So since n was an arbitrary odd number, the proof is complete. And so we like to write Q to D. Okay, uh, so I want to kind of quickly go back through everything we did in here. Okay, <laughs> we started out by taking, an, because this is a for all statement, we started out by taking an arbitrary element in our universe of discourse. And we do specify kind of what this university of discourse is or what this is arbitrary with respect to. And then usually the next thing you would do in something like this is to actually turn this arbitrary element into something you can work with. Here we can just use the definition of an odd number to say that n equals 2k plus 1 for some integer n. Okay? It's important that you put in those little detail words that there exists an integer n. You don't just say, you know, uh, some integer k because then, or for integer k, an integer k, because then we don't know if you mean for some or for all. Um, so we, we really need to be use our very precise, specific words there. But this also then allows us to see, well, the next time we say this, sorry, uh, then we, tell, we say what we're looking for. And here, the fact that we have a there exists in here allows us to see we need to shift into an existence proof. Okay? So, and this is, again, writing what we're looking for in terms of a definition that makes it easier to work with. Okay. Um, this is slightly backwards from how we often do existence proofs. So I don't first state what, uh, I don't first state that m equals 2k squared plus 2k. I kind of show you it works first, and then I say, see, this was my example. Okay. Uh, but that's all we kind of do is we just kind of expand this out. Using this, we rewrite it. We see that, oh, I can pull out the 2 and have the 1, and now I'm back to this form here. So it's usually good to have that in mind. So at that point, we can say, oh, great. Uh, this is an integer. So this thing is an integer because integers are closed under addition and multiplication, and k was an integer. So I can let m equal 2k squared plus 2k. And then I have my desired integer, and I just kind of point out that this was arbitrary, and so on. And so we're good to go.